uh, Jeanette. You will pass. Yeah, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell, I want to, through you, I want to ask the nominee. And I've looked at him very, very keenly, Mr. Speaker, very seriously. Mr. Speaker, the question that's worrying me is that the biggest problem in this country in terms of uh, when we approve people here in terms of governance is the Ministry of Agriculture. There have been problems from the last uh, five, seven years I was in Parliament, from the previous ministers to the one that we approved here who are 30 cases, plus now the PhD holder who has arrived here. Mr. Speaker, I want this nominee just to prove to this committee how he's going to deal with these cartels and this corruption in agriculture. Because if we were to describe corruption in government in form of a home, the bedroom of corruption in government is Ministry of Agriculture. The rest are sitting rooms, seven quarters, and other small places. And you know, Mr. Speaker, having a PhD and dealing with corruption, uh, having a PhD and dealing with corruption are two different things. So now that's one thing I want him to, to, to illustrate even physically, if he can, how he's going to deal, <laughs> how he's going to deal with, with, corrupt, with corrupt people in that place. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, how is he going also, because fertilizer is one of the biggest problems when it comes to corruption also. How are you going to work with the industries locally here to develop a fertilizer manufacturing program within the country here so that this issue of importation of fertilizer can, can end? So if you can prove those two things, for me, I'll be satisfied. Because I know after one year, you will be walking jobless in the street, I can assure you. <laughs> I can tell you. OK, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, Honorable Unet, for your questions. Uh, I know dealing with cartels is a, is a big issue. And they, 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 many, they, they are many formats and very, very many forms. But if I am approved by this house and this committee, I'm saying I'm giving a notice on cartels. <laughs> notice that they will be out of business. Yes. In the fact that uh, my background is that, and one of the, the principles which I hold very dear is integrity. Not to be compromised. And the other, the other, the other, the other principle I hold very dear is having the countries and the farmers' interest first. So I will deal with them. We will do whatever it takes. <laughs> I, I, I will do whatever it takes, Mr. Speaker, to, to, to deal with them, S putting systems in place, as I said, governance structures, making sure that uh, I involve all the agencies of the government. I'm sure the government of Kenya is capable of and have agencies which can deal with these cartels, and I will be in the forefront for that. Nelson, on the on the sir, sorry on the development of the fertilizer, uh, it's, it's a good is a good is a good one because we need to develop uh, the local industry. What is happening to today is that most of it, most of the what we have, most of the manufacturers we have are for blading. They are not for manufacturing of fertilizer, and it will be good to explore further whether they can, apart from blading, which is important because we need to bread for coffee, we need to bread for tea, we need to bread for various crops. We need also to go a step further and do the manufacturing of the fertilizer. So if I'm approved, this is one of the agenda I would like to pursue. Nelson Kreitz. Thank you, Speaker. Dr. there is a, a crisis in the tea sector. Tea prices at the Mombasa auction were on a downward trend in 2022 forcing the government to establish a minimum reserve price of 2.6 uh, USD for teas from the east of the rift and USD 2.4 for teas from the west of the rift. This initiative was aimed to stabilizing the market and addressing the declining tea prices at the Mombasa auction. However, the current pricing structure has resulted in several uh, millions of teas being unsold, thus resulting in stagnating uh, and warehouses and, and facilities. What strategies will you employ to alleviate this situation? 
Additionally, is the government interference in, the, in, in, in the manner necessary in a free market? And how can it be balanced to ensure that market stability without causing an adverse uh, effect? Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, uh, Honorable Nelson Koech. Yes, this, I am I'm seized by this, uh, f uh, this, this issue about uh, the minimum price, which has been set of 2.65 US dollars and 2.4. And that unattended, uh, what I would call effects, which is the piling up of the tea in the warehouses in Mombasa. This is a serious issue because it affects uh, the incomes of our farmers, of tea farmers. And the intention was good, but I think uh, going forward, we have to review that policy. It has to be reviewed with all the facts on the table. I would take the charge when if approved that if necessary, we, we don't have to create this uh, price setting. We have to say, let it go so that it is a free market, but it, it needs to be carefully, cautiously done so that it doesn't uh, impact negatively on the incomes of our farmers. So I will review that policy of the pricing, whether we need a, 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 a market uh, driven or a setting price in the, in the steel sector. Thank you. Posting. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Speaker. And uh, uh, at least uh, the nominee in his 62 years has at least found some time to find motivation to work with in public service. Not like others who are going for retirement and they are forced to join public service. So my question to the nominee is this. <clears throat> it's coming in at a time when we can view or see agriculture as dead which is actually supposed to be the backbone of this country. But the sector is dead. And what I mean, uh, Honorable Speaker, is if you look at outlet, which is market of agriculture, it's dead. All manufacturing or value addition to motivate farmers to do their farming is dead. If you go to, to maize, the outlet or the market is dead. If you go to Pyretram, we used to do very well in my constituency. And for the nominee, West Pokot also grows uh, uh, Pyretram at one point. But the exit of market is dead. You go to milk, is dead. Tea is dead. And you have been in public service. And suppose this committee and parliament approves you, I would like to know what you are going to do to improve this sector, particularly the value addition. Because if there's no value addition, then there's no motivation for farmers to be, to do farming. What, what are you doing farming for? You, you, you don't get any money. And therefore, maybe you need to tell this committee, then how will you treat this market or outlet so that it can motivate now farmers and your work will be more easier? Number two, agriculture is basically devolved. Almost 100% devolved. It's almost like health. So in this sector, we are interviewing you, and yet the backbone of agriculture is at the, at the, at the county level, which the National Assembly cannot access. So how will you work uh, 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 if you are approved? Because unless you work with, with counties, then your work will be theoretical. And maybe now dealing with cartels, or even those cartels might also change you to become a cartel. And as our Honorable, Honorable <laughs> Judith says, you might find yourself no job in a, in a year. What, do you want, would you like to propose uh, a nexus between yourself or national government with county governments? Like, for example, having a summit between the Minister for Agriculture and all ministers of uh, counties agricultures like having a summit maybe three months maybe four months like, like in health doctors have succeeded to link national government with county governments but there's no link within agriculture national level and county level what will you do in those, those two areas thank you speaker yes uh, doctor okay thank you mr speaker and thank you me, honorable cousin for that yes uh, I, I agree with you there's uh, the challenge of agriculture as it looks at, at the moment. Because when you look through the figures and the, the statistics, it indicates that despite agriculture being the, bo the, the backbone of our economy, we are not doing very well. When it comes to even our exports, we are not doing well. We are importing a lot of food into this country, almost all, worth about $4 billion dollars. 
a lot of a lot of food in terms of uh, when it comes to wheat, rice, uh, edible oils. So we, we have a, a tall order in terms of going forward. And food security sometimes is threatened uh, when it comes to maize production. But the last uh, example, the last uh, season has proved, for instance, that uh, with good interventions like the subsidized fertilizer, despite the problems, we can still have food security where we produce over 48 million bags and farmers are able to, and the country is able to, to have semblance, you know, have a good food security. So I would, I would first of all approach food security as one of the key areas in terms of making sure the farmers have, when approved, the farmers have those inputs, especially the fertilizer as indicated before. The food security is also about uh, making sure that <coughs> those inputs are delivered on time and they are good quality. And the other issue which is related to your second question is apart, is apart from inputs, farmers need services. And these services are to be provided according to the constitution. These are functions which are devolved, like extension. Extension, I would dare say that where I started uh, those years ago, uh, I feel pained to see what is happening. Extension, as we know it, is dead. Completely. Yes, it is dead. You go to the farmers have left to be their own devices. They don't know what to do. And you know, agriculture is about technology. Without, without the appropriate technology, you can do very little in terms of productivity. So this issue about uh, engaging the counties will be, if I'm approved, will be one of my greatest and clearest uh, priority in that I will use all the structures which are provided, the intergovernmental structures, to engage the counties to see what we, we can do, capacity build them, to fill the gaps. I was also thinking about even what is happening with the health sector, the model where the, the government, the national government has the health promoters. Can we have agri, agri promoters in the, in the, in the, working in the counties from national government? So those are areas which will be, as it has been suggested by Honorable Kosin, we will be having, we can have a summit where we can dwell on these issues with the agriculture committees of the, the house, so that we move forward. Because without extension and delivery of services, we are, we are just doing the margins. We are not doing very, very much. We need uh, support for, to our farmers. Thank you very much. We are aware that formulation of agricultural policy, even where it's devolved, is still vested in you. So you have to formulate proper policies and cascade them down to the counties. Uh, Gikaria? <coughs> Thank you uh, very much, Honorable uh, Chair. Just want to follow up on what Kosin was saying on devolution uh, in agriculture. There are so many state agencies and regional developments which are duplicating what is being done at the county level. Uh, my question is, what concrete plans are you going to put in place to avoid uh, that duplicity of functions and wastage? Secondly, unemployment is a huge concern in this country. What policies are you intending to bring to the ministry to encourage the young uh, Kenyans to venture into agricultural activity as a form of employment and engagement in terms of uh, uh, to reduce uh, the unemployment aspect in the country. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, Honorable Gekari. The duplication is uh, because the one of the biggest challenges in every sector is coordination. If you don't have good coordination, the duplication will occur. For instance, I, I'm sure, and uh, when I, I'm, uh, I'm approved, the, the sector which I'm going to, the ministry, has about uh, 20, 36 uh, parastatos. Very many of them doing various things. But are they coordinated? Are they tuned to the priorities of the sector? I think that is my challenge as a, the incoming CS, if I am approved, to make sure that they are tuned to what is the priorities of the sector. Because I think uh, some of them are not uh, 
they are doing their mandate and they are semi-autonomous, but we need to work as a team, to work towards a certain goal. So apart from coordinating with counties, there are also inter-ministerial coordination which is required to make sure that those parastatals and agencies are working towards the, 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 the laid-down uh, priorities. Employment. Agriculture is the biggest sector in our economy. I'm quite aware of that. And without agriculture uh, absorbing some of our youth, it will be a, a, a very uh, big task for the economy to do so. So we will be, if I'm approved in this by this committee, I will endeavor to make sure that the youth are taken care of, especially by when we are implementing all the interventions which are identified under the bottom-up uh, transition, the better, the better. They, be it in, uh, in, in leather, be it in dairy, be it in the crops like rice and everything, the value chains, all those value chains, we will get the nodes where the, value, the, the youth have to come in to create jobs for them and to make sure that they are meaningful jobs where they can be engaged right from the, the grassroots all the way. So the value chains approach is the way to go and I will promote it and make it is very clear that we are even monitoring what, how the youth are getting there, whether the youth are getting engaged. Thank you. Mary.